Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 1, Lesson 5, Creating Player Input. The objectives for this lesson are to define player input methods available within Unreal Engine Blueprints and demonstrate setting player input events with Unreal Engine Blueprints. Unreal Engine has the ability to process a lot of common inputs already built into it. Some common types are mouse and keyboard, a controller, touch for things like mobile games, and motion for things like VR or also mobile games. In Unreal Engine, these things are broken up into two basic categories of input events called action mappings and axis mappings. Let's go back to Unreal Engine and demonstrate setting up some player input events. I'm back in Unreal Engine and here we have our player right where we left it in the middle of the level. I'm going to show you one way to set up an input event and then I'm going to show you the preferred way. If we go to our blueprint graph and we right click, we can scroll down and we can see input. And if we open this up, we can see keyboard events, mouse events, controller events, all the various events that we can choose from. If I open keyboard events, I can then see a list of all of the keys on the keyboard. And just for some testing, I'm going to find W. I'm going to select it. If I drag off of this execution pin for pressed and type print, then whenever I press the W key, I should print the string. And just to show how the release one works, I can type print again. Change the message to goodbye. If I compile, and play. Now you would expect that I would be able to see those messages, but when I press W, you'll see that I'm moving around the scene. And this is because I'm not currently in possession of this actor. So when I press something on the keyboard, it's not actually activating the controls of that character. And we can see this by being in play here and the main editor. If I press this eject button, you can see that this is actually what I am. And this is just the default pawn that gets spawned into the world. You can see here, default pawn when I select it. So what we need to do next is change it so that we can be possessing the character that we want to in the game. We can manually possess any pawn in a scene by using the possess node. And if it doesn't show up, you can unselect context sensitive and see that there's a possess node here. And this takes two inputs. This one's going to be a player controller. And make sure you select the correct one. If we check this box back on, it will give us just one controller to choose from. And then what pawn do we want to possess? And we'll just put self. And now we see when I'm pressing W, I get hello. When I release it, I get goodbye. And this will just continue to happen. This is definitely one way you could start building your game, but this is not very stable or reliable. We wanna make sure that we're doing things in a way that is scalable to a full scale game. So that what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to delete everything we have. There's a better way to take control of the correct pawn when we start the level, and that's by using a game mode. A game mode is a special class in Unreal Engine that's made to govern the rules of gameplay. If you're familiar with sports, think of it like a referee that's making sure that all of the players are following the rules of the game. If you're familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, think of this like the Dungeon Master. It's controlling all the various aspects of the campaign as the players are playing it out. The game mode is instantiated when the level is initialized, and it cannot be changed once the level is loaded. So this is an important thing to note that if you start programming things in the game mode, that cannot be changed unless you reload the level. And here we are back in Unreal Engine, and I'm just going to right click in my content browser, select Blueprint Class, and then I'm going to select Game Mode Base, and we'll call this BP underscore Game Mode. And we'll notice that in our world settings, there is a game mode override where I can select BP game mode. But this is really only the way we want to handle it if 
you wanted to override the base game mode. We want to use the same game mode for all of our levels in this game. And the way to set it for the entire project is to go to your edit, project settings, maps and modes, and then we'll find the correct game mode here in default game mode. Now that we've done that, we can select this drop down, and we'll see that we have all these other classes that we can set as the base classes. Default pawn, HUD, player controller, game state, player state, and spectator class. We'll talk about some more of these in a future lesson, but for now, we're just gonna set the default pawn to our player. And while we have the project settings open, let's talk about the inputs. If we scroll down a little bit, we can select input, and we can see the two things we talked about, action mappings and axis mappings. Action mappings happen when a button is pressed or released, similar to when we were pressing the W key. An action mapping can have a number of various inputs assigned. So if we wanted to have a button for jumping, we could assign this as called it jump, and then assign whatever we wanted to that. There is a little shortcut key here, this little keyboard. If you click this and then press something on your keyboard, it will automatically fill in whatever you pressed. Axis mappings have a range of values that can be assigned. So this would be useful for analog inputs or for in our case, we're gonna use this for all of our player movement. So I'll select plus on the axis mapping, drop this down, and we're gonna call this one move forward. For our game, we are going to use WASD. If you wanted to use the arrow keys, you could do that as well. So I'm going to select the little keyboard and hit W, and that will scale it to one, which means whenever I press W, we're going to be assigning a value of one to this move forward axis. We can also set up S at the same time by selecting the plus again, hit the keyboard, and press S, and we want to assign the scale to minus one. So this will do the opposite of whatever W does. Let's go back to our player blueprint, and we're going to right click, and I'm going to type in move forward, and we'll see we have our access event. And in this one, instead of a pressed and released, there is the execution pin and the axis. So we're going to get a value of zero to one off of this float pin. We can also right click and type jump and we'll see our action event that we set up. And this is similar to when we assigned the W key, it has a pressed and released, and then another pin, which is the structure of the key. We'll talk about structures in a future lesson. And just to test this, we're going to drag off of this and hit print. And we'll drag off of this axis value and plug it right in there. It'll make the translation for us. Let's compile and go back into the game. When we press W now, you'll see that we get a print of one. When we release it, we get a print of zero. And when we press S, we get a print of minus one. The next thing I want to do is get this set up to start controlling the character. So I'm going to delete this print string that we were using for testing, I drag off the execution pin, and I'm going to type add torque in radians. We'll talk a little bit more about physics in a future lesson as well, but for now, all we need to know is that when we are using this move forward input, we're going to be adding some torque and we're going to be assigning it to a specific axis for how we want to move our character. And we see that there's a few inputs. Our first input is our target, which in this case is the sphere of our player. Our next input is called torque, and you'll see that it has an X, Y, and Z. This is called a vector. We can assign a bone, which we'll talk about in a much further section. And then Excel change, we're just going to click this on, but we can see here it says if true, torque is taken as a change in angular acceleration instead of a physical torque. Now, if you notice, our axis event only has one value of a float, and if we try to drag it in here, it's just going to assign it to all three, which is not what we want. We can right-click on the torque and say split plan, and then we can see those three values broken out. And for our game, we would like 
the move forward to be the y-axis. So I'm just going to drag this into here and let go. Now this node uses physics, so we do need to enable physics on our actor. And we're gonna do that by clicking our sphere and selecting simulate physics. And if we see what happens next when we compile and hit play, we'll hit the W key, but nothing's happening. And actually it is happening. It's just happening very, very slowly. If we sat here for a while and just watched this, it would eventually start to move. The reason it's not moving is because this value of one that we are inputting into this add torque is just not enough to get it moving. So what we need to do is we need to multiply that number. So we'll drag off of here and type the multiply on your keypad and we'll see multiply here. We'll drag this into this torque and we're gonna multiply it by 10 to start. If we go back in our game, we're gonna see something interesting happen. When I press W, I'll start to remove the camera and the ball stays the same. So why is this happening? Let's go back to our main viewport and we'll hit play and then we're gonna eject. And we move out, we'll notice that we are actually this ball that was spawned into the world and not this one. This is a feature of the game mode. It's going to spawn a new player into the level. So we actually no longer need this one and we can delete it. In our game though, we wanna be able to see the ball so we can know how we're navigating the maze. So back here in our player blueprint with our sphere selected, we're going to select add and type spring. And this is a spring arm component. If we go back to the viewport, we can see all it is is just this little line. If we add a camera to the spring arm component, we can now see that our camera is floating a bit away from the character. And if we select the spring arm again, and we go to target arm length, we can set how far away the camera is from the player. I think a thousand is a good distance to start. We can also adjust the angle of the spring arm and it will automatically adjust the angle that the camera is looking at the player. I think minus 50, minus 60 is probably good. Let's compile and we're gonna go back into the game and we're gonna see another issue with this. When I hit W, our whole screen starts to rotate. And this is because we're rotating the sphere and the camera is attached to the sphere. We wanna override this. And we can do this by going to the transform section of the spring arm under rotation, select world. And this will use the world rotation and let, instead of the player's rotation. Let's compile and hit play again. And now we'll notice that if we hit W and S, we can move the player back and forth in the world. Next, let's set up the A and D keys. If we go back to our project settings, and input, we can set up another axis mapping called move right. And for this, we wanna add the D key and the A key. Back to our player, type move right, and we'll get that axis event and we could create another one of these nodes, but we can also use the same one. If we double click on this execution line, we'll get what's called a reroute, and we can drag this directly into that, and now both of these will use the same torque node. And for this axis, we wanna assign the torque to the X. So we're going to drag out, we're again going to multiply it by a certain number. We'll use the same one, 10, and drag this into the X value. Hit play, and we'll notice when we hit D, we're moving the wrong direction, and when we hit A, we're moving in the same direction. And this is because we forgot to assign the scale of A to minus one. But we also know that they're backwards, so I'll assign the scale of minus one to D. Let's go back in the game. And now W, A, S, and D can move us around the level. 
And we know that the value that we're multiplying each of these by is 10, and that's the amount of torque that we want to add or a torque multiplier. So we can actually assign this as a variable to our actor. If we drag off this pin and select promote to variable, we can name this torque or torque multiplier if you'd like. And then we can also drag it into the bottom one. And then we have one common value for all of our torque or torque multipliers. And these lines that are green are using a float, which is a type of variable. And variables is what we're gonna talk about in the next lesson.